I think there is a primitive part of our brain that yearns for mountains. I, for one, am always in awe of the absolute splendor and beauty of mountains. Maybe it's something that I have inside of me that's ancestral and instinctual by nature. Or maybe it's something that all humans share. A love and respect for these giants. Thus, in today's video, we're going to be exploring the tallest mountain range in all of North America. While the Rocky Mountains or the Sierra Nevada Mountains get all the hype, the tallest mountain range in North America is actually the Alaskan Range. In addition to being the tallest mountain range, it's also one of the most incredible geological features of the continent. It's home to Denali or Mount McKinley, North America's tallest peak and over 6,190 meters. The Alaskan Range is a long, narrow stretch of massive mountains, approximately 970 kilometers wide. It's located in the south central region of the state of Alaska. But what most people don't know about this range is that it's still growing. Every year, these giants push up a little higher into the sky. And the story of how they got there involves continental collisions, ancient oceans, and forces so powerful, they're literally reshaping North America as we speak. And as always, this is Ali, and welcome back to Urban Atlas. As I mentioned previously, the Alaskan range stretches approximately 970 kilometers from the Alaskan Peninsula in the southwest, all the way to the Canadian border. This range is part of the larger American Cordillera, which is a continuous chain of mountains that form the western backbone of the Americas. The Alaskan Range are also considered part of the Pacific Ring of Fire, a tectonic belt of volcanoes and earthquakes that surround most of the Pacific Ocean. We've all heard of Denali, the tallest peak in North America, but this range contains not just one giant, but several of them. Nearby stands Mount Foraker. At an elevation of 5,304 meters, it's the third highest peak in the United States. Just to the south sits Mount Hunter, rising 4,402 meters above sea level. Despite being much lower in elevation than Denali, Mount Hunter is known to be a much more difficult mountain to climb due to its rugged, steep faces and precipitous cliffs it sees far less traffic and far less successful attempts. But what makes these mountains truly special isn't just their height, it's their latitude. At over 60 degrees north, the Alaskan range sits closer to the Arctic Circle than almost any other major mountain range. This means they're dealing with some of the most extreme weather conditions on the planet. A weather station placed near the summit of Denali recorded a temperature of negative 60 degrees Celsius on December 1st, 2003. Combined with a wind speed of 29.6 kilometers an hour, it produced a North American record wind chill of negative 83 degrees Celsius. But how did these monster mountains come to be? Well, the story begins millions of years ago, but it gets really interesting around 6 million years ago when the Pacific Plate decided to pick a fight with the North American Plate. You see, Alaska sits right on the edge of a geological battlefield. The Pacific Plate is trying to slide northward and getting shoved underneath the North American Plate in what geologists call a subduction zone. But guess what? This isn't a gentle or a gradual process. It's a collision so violent that it generates some of the most powerful earthquakes on Earth. The 1964 Alaska earthquake, magnitude 9.2, was the second most powerful earthquake ever recorded and it literally moved the entire Alaskan range several feet southward. This ongoing collision is what's known as an orogenic uplift. Fancy words, but it just means mountains being shoved skyward by tectonic forces. And this geological process, well, it's still happening today. GPS measurements show that Denali is slowly growing at about half a millimeter per year. The geology of these mountains tell an incredible story. Some of the granite in Denali's core is about 50 million years old, formed deep in the Earth's crust and then thrust upward by tectonic forces. Other sections contain marine fossils, proof that parts of what we now call the Alaskan Range were once at the bottom of an ancient ocean. Yes, the geology is impressive. 
But another thing that's absolutely mind-blowing are the glaciers. You see, the Alaskan range is home to thousands of glaciers and countless more unnamed ice flows. The Kahiltna Glacier, which flows down Denali's southwest face, is 71 kilometers long and up to 5 kilometers wide in places. And this is just one of the dozens of major glaciers in the range. And like many glaciers around the world, these are essentially rivers of ice that have been flowing continuously for thousands of years. The ice at the bottom of some of these glaciers is up to thousands of years old. And these glaciers carve valleys, transport massive boulders, and create the dramatic U-shaped valleys that define much of Alaska's landscape. Since the 1950s, many of the Alaskan range glaciers have retreated significantly. Between 1985 to 2020, glaciers in Alaska decreased by 13%. Most leave behind moraines, which are piles of rock and debris that mark where the ice used to reach. I previously mentioned the extreme weather you can find in the Alaskan range, particularly around the mountain of Denali. Here, you can find the combination of extreme cold and wind, which creates wind chills that can literally freeze exposed skin in mere minutes. And the weather can change from a relatively calm to a life-threatening blizzard in a matter of minutes. Climbers report going from sunny 20-degree weather to whiteout blizzards in the space of just an hour. And this dramatic weather is caused by what meteorologists call orographic weather. Basically, the mountain forces air masses upward, causing rapid cooling, condensation, and some of the most violent storms in North America. Despite the harsh weather, the Alaskan range hosts an incredible array of wildlife that has adapted to life at altitude and these extreme conditions. Dull sheep are the true mountaineers of this range. These sheep can navigate terrain so steep and treacherous that they're essentially safe from most predators. As you go higher to the alpine zones, you'll find creatures like the collared pika, essentially a high altitude hamster that is adapted to survive eight months in winter. These little guys, they actually hay. They spend the summer collecting and drying vegetation, and then they store it in rock crevices to eat during the winter. Golden eagles patrol these skies, and they're among the most powerful raptors in North America. They use the mountain's thermal updrafts to soar to incredible heights while hunting for ground squirrels and marmots. And remember in the beginning of the video, I spoke about that instinctual obsession with mountains? Well, many humans have an obsession with the Alaskan range because they represent one of the ultimate mountaineering challenge. The first successful attempt of Denali didn't happen until 1913. And even today, with modern equipment, Denali has a success rate of only about 50%. But it's not just about the height that makes climbing Denali and the mountains in the Alaskan range difficult. It's about a combination of other factors, like the extreme cold, which means that standard mountaineering gear often fails. Metal becomes brittle, batteries can die in minutes, and even breathing becomes a challenge and moisture from your lungs can freeze up in your nostrils. The isolation factor is also incredible. Unlike Everest, there are no established routes and relatively quick rescue possibilities. Climbers on Denali often are days away from help. If something goes wrong, equipment failure, altitude sickness, or injury, you're essentially on your own. But long before mountaineers arrived and tried to conquer these mountains, the Alaskan range held deep spiritual and practical significance for the Alaskan native peoples. The Koyokon people called Denali, Denali meaning the high one, a name that reflected not just the mountain's physical height, but its spiritual importance. These mountains played a key role for the Koyokan people. They provided essential resources, dull sheep for food and clothing, obsidian for tools, and spiritual guidance through their imposing presence. Many Alaskan native cultures have stories and legends about the formation of these mountains, often involving great battles between spiritual forces. Now, the naming of Mount McKinley and Denali goes back and forth. The mountain was renamed Denali in 2015, and this was more than symbolic. It was a recognition of the deep cultural connections that existed thousands of years before European exploration. Recently, the name has now been renamed back to Mount McKinley. Now, whether or not the locals call it Mount McKinley, well, that's for you to decide. Scientists are now using the Alaskan range as a natural laboratory to understand how mountain ecosystems respond to climate change. 
The lessons that they learn here will be crucial to understand what might happen to the glaciers and ecology of similar mountain ranges around the world. Glaciers that took thousands of years to form are now retreating at an unprecedented rate. In the last few decades, Denali National Park saw 14% reductions of glacier cover. But it's not just about the ice melting. You see, as temperatures rise, the altitude at which snow reliably stays frozen is actually moving higher up the mountains. This means that ecosystems are shifting upwards, and some species are literally running out of mountain. Another challenge is the thawing permafrost. This is causing increased rockfall and landslides, making some climbing routes more dangerous than ever. The very geology of the range is changing as ice that has held rock faces together for millennia begins to melt. And thus, the Alaskan range represents something profound about our planet. The incredible forces that shape the Earth are still very active, still pushing these giants higher into the sky. And in a world where so much feels permanent, these mountains remind us that our planet is constantly changing, constantly evolving. These mountains have been here for millions of years, and they'll be here for long after we're gone. Still growing, still changing. And thus ends our exploration of the Alaskan Range, North America's tallest mountains. As always, if you like content like this, remember to give this video a like. And if you want to see more, remember to subscribe to my channel. I post content like this once or twice every week. And as always, I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.